In this video, we'll create unique farmhouse accent pillows using stencils. So my inspiration for this video comes from a couple of stencils and miles and miles and miles and miles and miles of, and miles of fabric. And with just a few simple tools and lots and lots of creativity, I created that. The idea to create these no-sew sort of farmhouse accent pillows really came from a set of beautiful JRV stencils that I had and piles and piles of painter's tarps that were laying in my garage. Do you know how many pillows you can make out of a painter's tarp? So I decided I would make these pillows inexpensively, but I thought, you know what? I'm really gonna challenge myself here. I'm gonna challenge myself to make a set of pillows that requires no sewing. So there is no sewing involved in the making of these pillows. Woohoo! Now, whether you're reusing a painter's tarp that you already have, or you go to purchase something new, make sure that you throw it into the washing machine and the dryer, and then give it a good iron before you start your project. The JRV stencils used in this video are available at the link below. So I know inquiring minds want to know, what does an insane person do in the middle of Northern Wisconsin in the dead of the winter? Okay, to get started with our projects today, we're going to need to have three pillow forms and we're going to need to have fabric cut to size for all three of those forms. Well, not only do I create beautiful upscale farmhouse decor, the innovative and artful ideas, but we also like to do a little trekking and traveling while we're here. This pillow is a square and it measured, the form itself measured 16 by 16. So when I'm cutting my fabric, I'm going to add an additional two inches to both of those measurements. So the pillow was 16 across the top. I made the fabric 18 across the top. So today I'm going to share with you a little funky farmhouse decor and I'm going to give you a little inside look into what life is like here in northern Wisconsin in the dead of the winter. The pillow was 16 across the side. I made this piece of fabric 18 inches across the side. Take all three of your pillows, measure them, and then add two inches to all the measurements and that'll give you the dimensions you need to cut out your fabric. Living in northern Wisconsin can be brutal in the dead of winter. When it's 12 degrees outside and negative 17 below wind chill, what's a person to do? Well, Romeo and I are always up for adventure, so we like to hop in our car and take a little trek to one of the most beautiful places in this state, and that's Door County, Wisconsin. With no sewing involved, you are going to need some fusible web, possibly Velcro, grommets if you like, and you're definitely going to need a hot glue gun. An early morning rise, a good hot cup of coffee, and the best of company help cut through the winter chill as we make our way to the Door County winter tundra. Door County is a really popular summer destination, and as a kid, I spent my summers camping on the beaches and enjoying ice cream on the shoreline as the sun set. Oh, it's just such a beautiful place. My childhood memories include attending local fish boils and eating smoked salmon from the local fish markets. Lake Michigan just gives this gem of the Door County community life. The first sort of funky farmhouse pillow that I'm going to be creating is based off of a stencil made by JRV Stencil and it is a grain sack stripe stencil. This pillow form is horizontal, so I've got my fabric laid out horizontally as well, and then I have a ruler that I've laid out in the very center of that fabric, so I know what my middle line is. Then I grabbed one of my JRV stencils, that's a grain sack stencil, and you can see I've tucked it here right underneath that ruler so that I can start developing these vertical grain sack stripes that are gonna run the whole length of this pillow. You'll see I'm using a black paint here as I create the design with these stencils. Use whatever color paint you like, make it fit your palette. I love the um, contrast between the light and the dark of the black and sort of the creamy color background here, but be creative. Use more than one color if you like. Just make sure that the paint that you use is a good paint on fabric. Keep working to evenly space out these stripes all the way down the length of your pillow. And you can see how beautiful these vertical stripes look running down the length of the pillow. Now we're gonna choose a second JRV um, grain sack stencil, and we're gonna go ahead and create the horizontal stripes. So this will be the first of two or three horizontal stripes that I'm gonna lay down the length of this pillow. Are you ready for some no-sew pillow action here? This pillow is actually fused together using a fusible web. Uh, you could also use the Velcro if you like to, or you could use hot glue if you're so inclined. No judgment here. So if you're gonna use fusible web like I am here, you simply lay out the front of your pillowcase uh, with the front facing you, and then you're gonna cut your fusible web tape 
to the length and the height of your pillow. My tape was a little bit narrow, so I went ahead and used two strips just to make sure I had some better adhesion on this pillow. So I've laid out the tape on the top, and I'm gonna go ahead and do that around three of the sides of the pillow. We're gonna leave one side open so that we can actually tuck our form inside the pillow, and then we'll go back and fuse that side together at the very end. You lay the back of your pillow on top of that fusible web, just line it all up, and then we're gonna get out our iron and we're gonna go ahead and fuse those two layers together. Once the pillowcase is cooled, go ahead and flip it inside out and we're gonna get ready to sort of lay out the grommets that are gonna be the closure for that fourth side of our pillow. I really like the look of three grommets on this side of the pillowcase. So I've gone ahead and marked them off, cut out the circles, and then I went ahead and tapped in one of the grommets and then flipped the case over, tucked my pillow form in and went ahead and closed off the other two grommets. And I found there was a little bit of space in between those grommets, so I went ahead and added some hot glue just to close those off. And if you don't like the frayed edge, you can use something called a fray stop. You'll see that pictured here and that'll keep your edges from fraying too much. I wanted to have a little fun, so I built some tassels that I use for these pillows using this nifty little machine. Um, embellish the pillows as much as you like. I love tassels, I love the look, uh, so I thought I'd give them a try on these pieces and I think they look darling. And pro tip, before you go shopping for pillow forms, check and see what you might have at home. You might find you've got just what you need. But I'm just going to be real before any of our Door County winter tundra land explorations begin. We got to hit our favorite thrift stores. She got to looks to good, oh boy, I need a so bad in my life. All right, so this is pillow number two that we're going to be working on today. You can see it's got the same sort of farmhouse feel to it. It's got a stencil on it. It's also got some of the grain sack striping. And I've added a couple of tassels and it's got the grommets. Bonus, I decided to make it two sides, so I have a different graphic on both sides. So when you go to chuck it onto the couch, it doesn't matter which side it lands on. Both of them are going to look nice. So let's get started on this one. So this is that pillow I decided to stencil both the front and the back of the pillow with different stencils. And I got to say this Royal River Seamless stencil is by far my favorite stencil of all the JRV stencils. And to make it easier to center your stencils, mark off the halfway point with a black marker on each side of your stencils. It helps so much when you're lining your stencil up. And voila, another beautiful stencil impression. To kick up the fun and to add a touch that sort of draws all these pillows together, I came across these really, really cute grain sack striped towels at Joanne Fabrics. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm cutting the stripes off the towels, and then I'm actually gonna fuse them to the front face of each of the pillows. Measure from the side of your pillow to sort of the outside edge of the circle on both sides of your pillow. And then add an extra inch to that measurement so that we can fold over both ends of our stripe to give it a nice clean look. Cut a piece of a fusible web that we can use then to fold over those ends, tuck it on the inside, and then just give it um, a nice ironing for about 10 seconds to create that uh, pretty crisp edge. Fuse the stripes to both faces of the pillow and then we're ready to have a little more embellishing fun. So those paint tarps aren't just for pillows. Did you know you can make tassels out of painting tarps? I decided to give it a try. It's not something I'd done before and actually it's pretty easy. So you're gonna need to take your fabric and fold it just the way I've done here and then grab a pair of scissors and you're gonna start from one edge and you're gonna trim about two thirds of the way up the piece of fabric. So you're cutting through a number of different layers of fabric here. So just make sure you're working with some really good quality scissors. Um, you're gonna go ahead and make that cut again about two thirds of the way up and continue working down the piece of fabric until you get to the halfway point. And once you get to the halfway point, you're just gonna continue your cut all the way through to the end. So we're actually gonna cut these two pieces in half. You'll see that there are some loops at the bottom that we're gonna wanna cut open so that we can have sort of a nice frayed sort of tassel look. And we're gonna need to have a way to hang these tassels. So I've taken a inch of string or yarn, it's maybe 12 to 14 inches long, and I've folded the fabric over the top. And you can see, I'm just gonna start rolling up the edge. And here I pull out my hot glue gun, a crafter's best friend. And I'm gonna add a little touch of hot glue every inch or two so that the entire tassel is gonna to stick together at the top. 
And then we're gonna take a couple other strips. Uh, it could just be one, it could be several, depending on how um, wide they are. But we're gonna take a couple of strips and we're actually gonna wrap them around the top to give it sort of a nice, clean, finished look at the top. And again, just pull out the hot glue gun. It's sufficient for this project. And how stinking cute are these? We made them ourselves. So make sure the stenciled fronts of both of sides of your pillow are facing out. And then you're gonna be using some fusible web. And I decided to use some grommets to give this a little more interest to actually close your pillow up. So you'll work on three sides like we did before, and then we will close up the last side after we get our pillow form in. And if you like the simplicity of the fusible web and hot glue, go for it. But if you really like the sew it and want some permanency to it, grab the sewing machine. In full disclosure here, I wanted to find a way to hide the string that the tassel was attached to, so I used a decorator's needle to attach it. Sorry. And here's a little tassel tip. If you want to have a nice straight cut on your tassel, wrap the tassel with painter's tape, and then take your scissors and just snip across the tape. Pull off the tape and you've got a beautiful, fresh cut. On this brutally cold Door County day, we really became something like ice explorers. We explored the icy shoreline, and I'll tell you, the scenery was something out of a fairy tale. I got nothing better than spending my day with you. My life's sunny and better. Splashes of windswept water and spray created the most beautiful ice sculptures on Purehead Lighthouse in Sturgeon Bay. Just layers upon layers of frozen water created the most beautiful tendrils and delicate icicles. It truly felt like we were walking through a fairy tale. As we continued our ice explorations, we stumbled across some beautiful pieces of artwork that were left behind following the Fire and Ice Festival that was hosted in Sturgeon Bay. You can see these are just some beautiful pieces of carved snow and carved ice. This one's my favorite. And our ice expeditions wouldn't be complete without a little bit of ice fishing. It's a favorite wintertime pastime here in Door County. And this pillow is sort of the touch of sophistication that we're going to be working on. It's got the same grain sack stripes. Um, it's got the black and white. I uh, put some uh, decorative pom-poms on the sides. And then it's got that nice wreath with sort of a logo or emblem in the middle of it. It just sort of says upscale, classy farmhouse. And the last project pillow for today was made out of one of those towels I got from Joanne Fabrics that has the grain sack stripes running down the side. I added a delicate wreath first to the center of the pillow And then I decided to put a letter in the center just to give it sort of a polished touch. So I'm a girl who loves a little bit of embellishments. Um, so I picked out this black pom-pom trim and I simply adhered it to a couple of the sides of my pillows using some fabric glue. Now we've got to have a way for this pillow to stay together. So I went ahead and laid out some of that fusible webbing again that we're gonna to use to fuse the two layers of the pillowcase together. And again, if you prefer sewing, go ahead and sew. I just wanted to put together a video that anybody could do without having to have a sewing machine if they don't have it. Fuse together three of the sides of your pillowcase. Insert your pillow form. And then close it all up with a little more fusible web. Isn't it just classy? I love it. And I have to say my little dog does too. I caught her chewing on some of the pom-poms. Ah! And for us, no trip to Door County is complete without a stop to the Red Room for some cheese curds, a patty melt, and some chili. And then maybe a quick trip through Marchant's Meat Market for some cheese curds. Um, a little bit of apple cider, cherry cider. Those are local favorites. And all the cherry products you can possibly imagine. And the best part of this whole day of exploration came from a tip from one of you, my subscribers. I received a message from a beautiful lady who said there's a really fun and neat place to go visit in the Green Bay area. And so we decided to stop in and give it a try. Introducing the Dough Shop. It's Wisconsin's first edible cookie dough shop. And I've gotta say, their gourmet flavors are absolutely amazing. 
It's a family-owned business that's on a mission to pay it forward, and I love the idea of helping others in the things that we do. I'll tell you, their offerings are just divine. We had the chocolate chip cookie dough, and we had the cookies and cream cookie dough, and oh, the cookies and cream cookie dough is something to dream of. If you're in the Green Bay area and you're looking for a sweet treat, it's a must stop, and guess what? They ship. I gotta tell you, this is my absolute favorite of all the pillows I put together in this series. And unfortunately, I lost the footage on it. Spent a good hour or two hours putting it all together and went to the camera and it was gone. I just wanted to at least show it to you. It's a substantial pillow. It's got some darling tassels on it. It's got that really nice graphic. This is another one of those JRV stencil graphics. A couple of grommet. And with this pillow, you can see it looks a little sturdier than some of the others, and that's because I chose to make the front and the back out of two layers, if that makes sense. So the front is made out of two pieces of fabric that are infused together, and the back is made out of two pieces of fabric fused together, and then I put them all together with the grommet. Look at how darling this turned out. Truly my favorite. The sky's the limit with this project, so just have fun with it. And before I say goodbye, I just want to take a minute to dedicate this video to my mom and dad. Mom and Dad, I love you. You are two of the most loving, generous, and dedicated parents a person could ever ask for. If you ever get the opportunity to visit Door County, Wisconsin, whether it's in the summer or in the winter, I promise you it's a place you're going to love to explore. And remember that creating unique farmhouse decor doesn't have to be expensive or difficult. With just the use of a few innovative and artful design ideas, you can do it. Thanks for watching, and if it's up to you, be the reason that someone smiles today. To purchase any of the JRV stencils seen in this video, simply click on the link in the description below. We'll see you in the next video.